Okay, my guest today, 20-year office leasing veteran here in San Diego, Tony Russell's here. Tony, how's it going? Good. How are you, Bob? Thanks for having I'm doing, me. Yeah, I'm doing great. What's uh, what's happening? How are things? Uh, you know, just uh, staying, staying busy. Markets definitely picked up dramatically this year compared to last year. Um, so it's interesting seeing everyone you know, in the process getting back to work and kicking off bunch of requirements that were on hold last year. So it's a busy time. I think everyone yeah. in being back in the office later this year. It feels like, and tell me if you're feeling the same way, it feels like tenants are starting to re-engage a little bit. You know, some of those projects that might've been on hold for a while or even scrapped all of a sudden are, are, are we're talking again. Uh, absolutely. That's what I've been experiencing last year. A lot of the requirements that were active once COVID hit, everyone kind of pumped the brakes and said, wait, you know, we don't know what to do. How long is this going to last? How is this going to affect how we're laid out? How much space we have? Are people working in the office? Are they working remotely? We don't know. There's too much uncertainty. So, you know, they were just kicking the can, extending leases short periods of time, putting their requirements on hold until there was some certainty. And now it seems to be, there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, with the vaccines being out now and all these requirements that were on hold, they're dusting them off and we're seeing tour activity pick up as a result with everyone anticipating that they'll probably fully be back in the office, you know, come, come fall this year. Yeah. Are you seeing, you know, we're doing a lot of the, you know, recalibrating, restructuring your office, the way it looks and feels and you know, kind of that flexible workforce kind of thing. Uh, but on the, you represent a lot of the biggest landlords in town. Are, are you seeing a kind of a, a real dramatic change in the way offices are put together or not as much? Yes. What, what I'm seeing is companies are very sensitive about bringing people back to work and they want to have their employees back to work, but in order to have them back in the office and be comfortable there, they need to create an environment that their employees feel safe in and healthy in. And what I'm seeing is a lot of companies in the past, you know, were really value driven, um, looking for, you know, lower lease rate type transactions, value opportunities. But now it seems to be all about finding the right healthy space. So we're seeing a lot of tenants, maybe they're downsizing their footprint a little bit in some cases, but they're typically upgrading the type of space that they go in. So we're seeing a lot more activity, you know, in the newer developments that have larger floor plates. So people are on one floor versus multiple floors. So people are spending less time in elevators, spaces that have access to indoor outdoor space because we're in San Diego and they can have yeah. their doors open and freely go in and out of the office. Um, so we're seeing a lot of people, you know, really take some time and look at upgrading the overall quality of their environment. Yeah, perfect. Before we get too into the weeds on some of the real estate stuff, I, I also want to hear, I, I always like to, to hear how guys got into the business. So I think you're, you're Arizona State. Yeah. So, right? yeah, I went to AS, I grew up in the Midwest, Omaha, Nebraska. I uh, went to oh, cool. ASU and I went to college to be an architecture major. That was my focus. Hmm. And during my time at ASU, one of my fraternity brothers came to me when I was a junior in college and he had been working an internship at Grubb and Ellis, which doesn't exist anymore, but yeah. he was graduating and uh, they were looking for someone to replace him. And he came to me and I had no idea what commercial real estate was, but I jumped at the opportunity to get some you know, good quality job experience and started working in commercial real estate and just really fell in love with it and decided that's what I want to do. And I've been doing that ever since. So that's, been since what 1997 so 23 years or so now so you jumped straight into it and yep. did you did you know right away that you know you could you could pick industrial office retail you know all the different uh, sectors did you know right away that office leasing was what you wanted to get into or did that just kind of so when yeah. i first started i worked under two senior brokers one was an industrial broker and one was an office broker and 
I had this attraction towards the office side just because I had a fascination with the buildings themselves. And I think that's from my architecture background. And so that kind of attracted me to you know, the office side of things uh, because of my architecture background. And yeah. I jumped into that and been doing that ever since. Right, right. So it feels like over the past, I don't know, how long How long have we been in this COVID situation? 12, 14 months, you know? Yeah. Um, Too long. The, what's really kind of kept things, uh, I don't want to say alive, but the momentum has really been driven by the life science, right? It, that's yeah. just really hitting a peak. Um, and the tech really has also kind of kept things alive in the office market, um, which kind of goes into what I think is super interesting, which is this millennia smart park in, in Chula Vista. So I, I want to hear the story when you, when you're advising your client, you're talking to the developer and you and your team are, are, are in the, you know, you guys are getting drinks or you're having a, a, a meeting at a, at a conference room somewhere. How, what does that, what does that look like when you guys are talking about what, what are we going to do with this site in Chula Vista? Yeah, it's interesting. So millennia, is a project that I've been working on for a few years. Um, it's basically a big piece of land right now, no existing buildings, but we designed three separate campuses several years back. Gensler was the architect and with massive site where we designed 1.5 million square feet of corporate office on the site. And we kind of started out, you know, looking for large tenants for build to seat opportunities. And we're focused kind of solely on traditional office and, and big tech. Um, but a lot of that demand was a little bit more focused on other regions in the county. And we kind of took a step back and looked at the site, looked at the location being in Chula Vista, which has a lot of interesting things that a lot of people would not know about. Um, Chula Vista, it's one of the few smart cities in the United States, meaning all of their traffic lights are computerized. So if you're testing autonomous vehicles, there's the capabilities to do that on the streets of Chula Vista. There is one of the largest drone testing sites located in the United States that's in Chula Vista as well. And companies from all over go to Chula Vista to test out their drone technology because of the weather, the line of sight. Mm and the geography of that region right there. Um, you have Brownfield, which is a large airport where you can do aircraft, autonomous aircraft testing as well. There is the bay um, on the west end of Chula Vista where the Navy does a lot of their underwater drone technology testing. So there's the ability for companies to, that are in the autonomous industry to be in Chula Vista and test their devices, whether it's on land, whether it's in the air, or whether it's in the water. So we kind of looked at that and we're like, this is very, very interesting. And we yeah. kind of started looking around, you know, at the autonomous industry, which is growing like, like crazy. Like almost every type of business is going to be in the autonomous industry in some fashion, whether it's an Amazon, whether, you know, it's a traditional drone company, um, delivery services, what have you. So we thought we were kind of onto something here. And so we took a look at all of those fundamentals and said we should create a new region for california and we wanted to brand this whole entire area along the 125 freeway right where millennia is located and brand this autonomous alley and our marketing strategy is to go to industries that are in the autonomous business nationwide and present an option for them to have a big R&D center or a corporate office location right next to where they're doing all of their testing for their products. And so we're getting some great responses and we're talking to a lot of big major companies nationally. Our marketing strategy here, you know, is, is different than a lot of others. A lot of others, you're real, with a traditional office building, you're kind of focused on what companies are here in San Diego and let's go yeah. try to attract them to relocate from the building that they're in to this new project. But what we're looking at is national. And, you know, we're talking to companies that are in Michigan. We're talking to companies that are in the Bay area. We're talking to companies that are in 
the Southeast, so from all over. Um, so the response is good. And so we think we're onto something. We haven't signed any leases yet, but for these companies, we provide a phenomenal campus with massive scalability, which you know companies in the tech industry need. So they could come into our project and take 20,000, 100,000, 200,000 feet, and there's a, a clear path for them to grow up to essentially 1.5 million square feet on this campus. I think it's brilliant. It's like you're putting together a local ecosystem of autonomous everything, right? Absolutely. And um, are you finding when you're talking about it being a national platform where you really got to go out and, and find these people, is there anywhere in specific, I'm thinking maybe the Silicon Valley or something like that, where you see the majority or a cluster of these kinds of businesses? Yeah, there, there are a large cluster up in the, the Bay Area, obviously, because yeah. that's a lot, a lot of where the big tech is located. Um, what we've also been seeing over the past year is a lot of the big tech companies that are in the Bay Area expanding their footprints already down here in San Diego uh, due to the weather, um, due to yeah. you know, the, the talent pool here, you know, all the grads coming out of UCSD, all the existing you know, defense engineering companies, existing tech companies that are here. There's a lot of untapped talent. So, you know, there's a valid reason for, you know, companies to come to San Diego and expand here versus areas like the Bay Area where it's getting kind of built out and there's not those opportunities that exist up there. Right. And we're seeing that shift right now with, you know, some of those companies coming down from uh, Northern California already uh, in, in on the East Coast. So you, you think we're going to see more of that? And I do. So, so, it feels ahead. like gates have opened and yeah big tech companies that are here you know the, a lot of com a lot of the traditional companies weren't doing anything during covid they were on hold but all the big name tech companies have been doubling their footprints here in san diego throughout covid so it's been it's been interesting to see that trend yeah that, that's exciting um, being a broker in san diego we've always talked to our clients about telling them eventually big tech from the Bay Area will come down to San Diego and expand down here. And now it's actually happening. So it's exciting to see. Really is. And so right now it's it's Carlsbad. There's a little bit of a cluster with the gaming and Serrano Mesa, La Jolla, of course, Torrey Pines downtown. And you think this Chula Vista site has got another Another, just another opportunity. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of projects in San Diego that offer the scalability that I was yeah. talking about. And right. all of these big tech companies, if they need 100,000 square feet, they're not going to go to a building and just lease 100,000 square feet. They need to know on that street or on that mm -hmm. campus, is there a path for me to expand in a year, two years, three years, four years? And a lot of the larger campuses that can accommodate that type of growth are getting leased up. Um, most of those campuses exist in sub markets like Torrey Pines, Sorrento, yeah. UTC, Carmel Valley. And in those areas, you've had this big tech boom in addition to the biotech boom that's been going on at the same time. So both the biotech and the tech tenants in those markets are competing for the same space. And right now, you know, there's just a handful of options, you know, up with 100,000 square feet or greater available. And in all of those options, there's multiple tenants fighting for the same space. So as a result, when those options dry up and there's still all that demand, those tenants have to go somewhere. And we're seeing a lot of development in downtown San Diego with IQHQ's project, um, with the Palladium that Bosa just completed, with Stockdale's project, Horton Plaza. Um, um, phase three's new life science development at 1155 Island. Yeah. And you have these landlords going in downtown and specking out new campuses because they see that everything's drying up in these North central markets. So I do think we're going to see more growth coming into downtown. I think from there, you know, we could see a lot of growth coming into Chula Vista, which is, you know, 15, 20 minute drive away. Um, and there's tons of awesome new housing developments in that area. 
where a lot of younger people would like to buy homes, you know, similar to Carmel Valley or along the 15. Um, so there's great quality residential developments, good schools and scalability for a big company. What's amazing, and you mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier, but that Chula Vista is on board with this in so many ways, and they already are, you know, kind of an, an autonomous city. Um, I don't think any, I don't think a lot of people knew that for sure. Now, and the, the drone testing area, that's that's already existing, correct? That's already existing. And then one thing that we're doing right now is we've been in discussions with the city of Chula Vista about getting access to some additional land right next to Millennia Smart Park. Um, and we're looking at a 30 acre site there where we're proposing building a autonomous vehicle testing facility, a testing track. So the companies that would come down doing drone testing, um, doing aircraft testing could also do autonomous vehicle testing in, in the, right next to the office space as well. One interesting thing, you know, we've been meeting with the city officials in Chula Vista. We met with the Chula Vista Police Department. And if you look at the Chula Vista Police Department, they've been all over the news. They've been on 60 Minutes and other, uh, other shows uh, nationally. Um, they're the first city in the United States that has drones responding to all of their 911 emergency calls. So if you're in Chula Vista and you call 911, immediately a drone takes off from the Chula Vista Police Department and goes directly to the site. They evaluate the site. That way the officer on the way to the call can already see what's going on real time and be prepared for what they're walking into. And they're one of the first cities to be doing that. And they're a model city globally. I mean, it's it's really interesting. So on so many, there's so many reasons why autonomous makes sense in Chula Vista. The whole yeah. the entire city is in, embracing it. And you have all of the resources right there. It just seems to me, you know, I'm I'm no expert in, in you know, the, the autonomous uh, and the future of it, but everything I hear about is, is you know, that's that's where we're headed. And yes. so you're going to have a track that's going to be right there as well. So uh, yeah. the company's we're not, we're not building it. We're not going to spec that out, but yeah, yeah. we're working with the city. We have a site identified. We have a layout planned. And when we secure a large tenant that has a need for that, we'll have the ability to develop that track. So we have a lot of support from the city and the developer Chestnut Properties who's building Millennia Smart Park is completely on board. And it's, the response that we've been getting has been great. So we're, we're really excited about it. Yeah, what are some of the other kind of highlights of that? I'm we was reading the, the brochure and it has things like uh, those smart traffic signals that you talked about a little bit and uh, energy management programs. And, um, you know, talk a little bit more about what the smart park really means. And what, I think where we're headed in the future. Yeah, basically, it's just a whole technology platform where the yeah. city can monitor everything going on with their traffic lights. Um, they have, you know, cameras throughout the city, um, Wi Fi hotspots throughout to be able to uh, basically be able to uh, monitor all of the autonomous vehicles that are being tested in that area. So it's just this huge technology platform and investment that's been invested by that city to embrace that technology. And the reason they did that is to attract businesses in that industry to that city. And I, I imagine you, you know, the, you have the autonomous ecosystem there, but there's probably several layers of tenants and businesses there associated with that or just high tech tenants that, that may have, you know, something that goes along with, you know, servicing some of the other that's, companies. That's, that's right. I mean, and that's what we're anticipating will happen, right? I mean, it's similar to Sorrento Mesa years ago when Qualcomm came into Sorrento Mesa, right? right. right? And they're a 4 million square foot tenant in a six and a half, seven million square foot market. And as a result, all of these companies that do business with companies like a Qualcomm want to be located near them. 
you know, same thing up in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley. I mean, basically that's what we want to duplicate down here, make autonomous alley kind of like Silicon Valley, but instead of just focused on tech, it's focused on the autonomous industry. So everything autonomous, whether you're a provider to an autonomous company or whether you're a company creating an autonomous product. And it's been long time really since Chula Vista's had a real class A type of a project. So, so this is a, I don't want to say a gamble, but a little bit of a um, pioneering effort, let's say. Yeah, and it's located where our site's located. You can go to our website, millenniasmartpark.com and take a look at it. But where it's located, it's in a brand new area, the East Lake area where everything's new out there. It's all brand new, retail, brand new housing community, brand new schools, and now brand, brand new retail, new hotels right next door to where our site is. Um, so it's, it's a really, really nice place. Sounds fantastic. Uh, lastly, so we're coming out of this COVID situation, hopefully. I just got my second shot. My I just company. got my first. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good. How do you feel? You feel okay? Uh, I was a little groggy for yeah. maybe 24 hours or so, but uh, then I bounced back and I feel completely fine. Yeah, good. Well, I think more and more people are doing that and we're seeing like we're kind of coming out of this situation. What are you expecting to see over the next, let's say, 24 months in, in the office environment here in San Diego? Well, I think we're just we're going to continue to see tremendous growth in San Diego uh, based upon the biotech industry that's just red hot, big tech, red hot. There's no signs of that slowing down. Um there's more demand than there is product coming online. So as a result, you know, I think we'll continue to see rental rates increase. Um, we'll see more spec development breaking ground um, in all parts of San Diego as a result. Uh, so I think it's, you know, it's going to be very, very exciting. And I think, you know, companies will, it seems like most companies want to be back in the office, right? I mean, you had yeah. last year, all these big tech companies, we're being very vocal about we're embracing working from home. We're going to let our employees work from wherever they want and work remotely. And now we're seeing the majority of those companies retract those comments and they're all, <laughs> yeah. and they're all doubling down. You know, all the companies yeah. said that they were embracing that are the companies that are doubling their footprint during COVID. So <laughs> I think that I think right. we're going to be in a great spot and I think it'll be a very exciting time. Um, you know, markets like, the north central markets of UTC, Torrey Pines, you know, those are going to be red hot. You're going to see a big transformation with downtown downtown San Diego with yeah. a number of the developments that are underway there that are bringing this brand new, cool, large scale product to that area. So it'll it'll be interesting to to see how that all shakes out over the next twelve to twenty four months. Well, as you can see, I'm in I'm back in the office here. Mm -hmm. I tried to do some of these things from home and I had the dog barking half the time. Yeah. You know, my kids coming in asking questions. And so I'm, I'm on board with get, getting back. Yeah, to the I, office. I agree. I agree. I'm the same way. Yeah. We, uh, we were shut. Our office was shut down for a month or two, um, but we pretty much stayed open on a smaller, you know, lower capacity. Uh, schedule and, but it's, it's worked out great. And I think now everyone is just eager to get back and be able to interact with people versus all these issues that you have with the zoom calls for every single meeting. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing. I was, you were just talking about some of the life science buildings and, and the industry. And um, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, it's so hot right now. Are you getting a lot of calls from investor landlords that say, Hey, I, I really want to get into the, the life science landlord business too. Can it help me do that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. A couple of years ago, you know, there were just a handful of players in the life science business as far as on the real estate side, the developer side. And now the floodgates have opened and there's lots of landlords wanting to be in that space. And I mean, you can see with a lot of projects that have sold over the past six to 12 months, We've had this massive supply of vacant office buildings being sold at huge numbers so they can be converted into life science pro projects. 
you know, we've been involved with four or five of them in the past six months alone, and there's more coming and there's a tremendous amount of investor demand around it. So um, what we're seeing is, you know, the life science supply is going to increase, but there's so much demand that everything's leasing up rapidly. I mean, the projects that I'm working on right now, we have a few, you know, large scale developments underway and there's multiple tenants looking at virtually every space. So uh, I, don't, I don't see the life science side of things slowing down in, anytime soon. And I think you're going to see a lot more uh, investors wanting to play in that space. Well, you know, uh, just recently we, on the on the show here, we had a couple of venture capitalists and some, you know, life science, you know, immersed in that life science business. And I thought it was amazing how important they see the, the real estate availability here in San Diego and to be able to offer you know, ready and available even two to five thousand square foot lab mm -hmm. space. Um, it just really keeps the the ball rolling, let's say, yeah. on the growth of these companies. Absolutely, because all these companies, they go through another round of funding, um, and then all of a sudden, they have an influx of cash come in, and then they need to double their footprint, and they need it tomorrow. And they need those move-in ready options. And there's landlords out there that are specking them out, and they're leasing up immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you've got a number of projects and um, I can't wait to have you on again to talk about another one, uh, your, your next big one coming up. But uh, appreciate you coming on today and telling us about uh, the market and, and Millennia Smart Park. And, and it's coming out of the ground, hopefully, what, uh, summer? We're breaking ground this summer. The summer, yeah. I'm on phase one. So the project's 1.5 million square feet. That's three connected campuses. And our plan is to break ground on the first campus, which is two buildings. And each of those buildings is approximately 160,000 square feet. So that's that's phase one. And then once we land a tenant in all or part of that, then we can move with the next phase. Well, it's going to be fascinating to watch. I can't wait. I hope I, I can't wait to see the uh, the track next next to it when that all happens. That's going to be super cool so uh good luck with everything and uh hopefully i'll i'll be down there and and, and see it all with you soon and uh thanks That's for being with me today man we're the project for sure we'll do that anytime sounds good tony thanks for uh being on today appreciate it all right thank you appreciate it okay